what? Uh, duh. The history and development of string theory, man. Huh? No, oh, cause in 1666 an apple fell on Newton's head. Our modern view of gravity from this event was bred. Till Einstein came along and he said, Newton, man, you suck. It's obvious that space-time controls gravity, you schmuck. But unification wasn't a come from relativity. And so poor Einstein spent his later years in mental misery. Then in 1968, the world of physics, it did change. And through the years, a new theory arrived, and it was strange. It said the world we live in is comprised of not but strings. These tiny bits of energy, these crazy wiggly things. It finally made the subatomic forces work with gravity. The quantum world and Einstein became one big family. Marimba Solo! We're riding the Knowledge Express, man! Oh well, with string theory, uncertainty had shown its ugly face. There were five versions, each unique, so which should we embrace? Then Edward Witten came along and said, hey guys, shut up! There's eleven dimensions, P-brains, D-brains, and much more close up. The world gave out a collective awe, and everyone did understand the universe and unification might be close at hand. See, different string vibrations cause the particles we know. And each dimension helps explain why strings move just like so. We may be just a membrane and our world is not unique. There may be many other universes, so to speak. But in this crazy string-based world, there's so much we can do. So man, just sit on back and let the supersymmetry work for you. So you understand now, man? <laughs> <laughs>